do you feel when you first meet someone? Do you hope that they like you? Well, in this episode, I'm going to give you tips on how to be liked when you first meet someone. Hello, lovely dynamic women. I am Diane Rolston, your host. And today we're talking about how to be liked when you first meet someone. I'm going to give you some tips, some tricks, some things that I do that could be really helpful. So first, let's think about why even talk about this? <laughs> why, why does it matter about being liked? Well, I think we all want to be liked. Let's look at different situations. So we are maybe at a friend's house and they have people over that we're meeting for the first time. We want our friends' friends to like us. We want to seem friendly. We want them to say nice things about us. And maybe we even want to have a friendship. Other situations might be the company staff party, right? And you maybe first meet some people from another location, or you first meet someone's spouse there, and you want to be liked because you work for the company and you want it to be a positive experience. Maybe you're networking and you have your own business and you meet someone and you want to be liked so that they will then maybe trust you and maybe want to do business with you or refer you to someone else. And the last situation, maybe there's more. If there are, comment, let me know. Uh, another situation is maybe you want to be liked because you're at a dating event or you first meet someone on a blind date and you want them to like you because maybe you like them or you really want romance. So here are three ways that you can encourage them help them, <laughs> persuade them to like you when you first meet them. And these three tactics can be used in any situation, even maybe in a job interview. Okay, let's go through them. And by the end, I want you to think about which one do you like the most? So the first one is be curious. Be curious. Ask questions. Now, don't make it an interrogation and don't ask questions that are a bit too intense, but be curious. And so if you say to someone, what do you do? And they tell you, ask a follow-up question. Uh-huh. You know that. Probably your mom taught you that or someone older in your life taught you to, well, ask a question or maybe your dating coach taught you that. But when we can be in that curious mode, it shows that we care about the person. When we ask two follow-up questions, it shows that we are giving that person time, giving them space. We're respecting them. And people love to talk about themselves because we're in this time when everybody's so busy and we, we're texting, we're not actually talking. And so when you allow someone to talk about themselves, they're starved for that. So it'll feel so good. It's funny. I've had some conversations where I don't think I talked at all about myself and I just asked questions and let the person talk, talk, talk. And at the end they were like, wow, it's so lovely to meet you. You're such a great person. Uh, I really enjoyed our conversation. And then we went away and I thought, I don't know anything about me <laughs> because uh, they didn't ask me anything, but that's okay. We had a good conversation. And then the next time uh, they asked me more. Now, a little bit of a, an extra tip here. If you want it, I'll give you an extra tip here. When someone tells you a story, look for a quality that they had. So maybe someone says, oh, I was just so excited. Um, the other day, you know, my, my friend, she invited me to come over and I noticed that her rose bush was a little bit crazy and I was able to help her um, like trim it in a way that her, her roses will flourish now. And she was so grateful for that. And so when you respond, you don't need to say a question of like, well, what kind of rose bush or maybe ask, what did you do? And, but in it, you can say, you can acknowledge something about them by saying something like, wow, you're such a kind friend or, oh, you're, you must be great at gardening. So give them a compliment or acknowledge something about them so that they feel that you have really seen them. Or even finding a value. Oh, it sounds like helping others is really important to you. So that statement of it sounds like such and such is important to you is a really great way for the person to be like, whoa, they just saw me. They just heard me. They were paying attention and, and they, they understand, they get me. 
People want to be, want others to get them. And so they'll like you when you can connect that way. Um, a lot of times instead, people will try to one up them or tell a story that they had, but instead reflect back to them what you see. Okay. The second thing that you can do is once you find out what they love, what they're passionate about, or even what problems that they face, share something that will help them. So first is be curious, then share something that will help them. And you, it might naturally come to that place. And so if the person did talk about their crazy rose bush and didn't know what to do with it, and, and I actually, side note, I shared that story because I have a crazy rose bush that is actually like a really, really tall tree. And so if anyone out there knows what I should be doing with it, please message me because I have no clue. It's, I think it's reaching over the fence, trying to get the sun. Um, but it, it needs to do better. <laughs> so if someone says, oh, I've got this really crazy rose bush and you know something about that, then you can say, oh, well, let me send you a video explaining how to do that. Cause I actually know how, or I'm happy to, to give you a few tips. If you send me a photo of it, or maybe you have no clue what to do, no clue, but maybe, you know, someone who does right. Then you can connect them. So share some information to help them. Now, if it doesn't get to that point in the conversation, maybe you just offer to share something with them. And you might say something like, oh, I read this really good book the other day. And there, were t there was this like cool diagram in it. And then they're like, oh, wow, that's, that's really interesting. Or that sounds cool. And you're like, I, I'd be happy to share that with you. Or if it was an article that you could just share the website link, or there was a tool, like an online tool that you know about, you could share that with them. Then that sharing to them helps them to like you because not only are you understanding them now, but you're also wanting, you're showing how you care enough to help them. Especially if you can solve a problem for them, then they will like you. They will remember you. So the third thing that you can do, no matter what, no matter the situation, to have someone like you is to smile. Now, I don't mean creepy smile. I don't mean staring and smiling at someone across the room and, and um, you know, weird, making it seem really weird. I just mean smile. You know, I walk on the trail. Uh, most days I walk on the trail and I always smile and say hi or good morning. Um, and I just, I notice that the people that I feel like I don't like them is because they didn't smile or they didn't say anything. And so it's so easy to smile because a lot of times when we meet people for the first time, they feel nervous or we feel nervous or shy or we don't know what to say. And even if English is your second language or you're in a country where you don't speak their language, a smile at least shows that you're friendly. It shows that you're confident. It shows that you're not stuck up and you're approachable. So smile, obviously, if it's appropriate, right? If it's appropriate. If it's a, a really hard moment and the person actually is crying or whatever, like, let's not be smiling at them. Um, but you have that opportunity to smile and look at them and let them kind of know that you're enjoying the conversation with them. So these are the three things that you can do. Um, this kind of comes because last, um, just recently, I did a podcast episode on how to appear confident. And these were some of the pieces that appearing confident can also be being curious and sharing something to help them and smiling. However, it's more about um, having people like you. These, these steps are really helpful for that. So as I promised I would ask you in the end, which of these three do you think will be most helpful for you? Which of these three do you do already? And which one do you want to do better at? Okay, leave me some comments. And if you haven't yet, can I ask that you write a review? Now, why? Because when people are checking out this podcast, they're going to say, do I really want to listen to this one? And the way they're going to know is by checking out the reviews. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate that. And if you take a screenshot of it and then shoot it over to my team uh, at the email address, teen at dianerolston.com, uh, including your mailing address, then I can send you a little something special in the mail. If you haven't yet, like, subscribe, share with a friend. And until next time, stay dynamic. Bye.